Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Is it alright to recite and blow on Zamzam water for healing from illnesses? Is it, is it correct to, to recite and to blow on Zamzam water for healing? Yeah, yeah, inshaAllah. Of course, Zamzam is, is uh, the holiest of all of our our waters and has immense realities from the springs of Al Kawthar in paradise, is the source of its, its immense dressing and immense blessing. And that to, to drink from it and, and recite Surat Al Kawthar before it and Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and the Sharaf and Nabi and ask by the holy. Soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and Ashab al Nabi, Ahlul Bayt al Nabi, and all these awliyaullah that their souls to dress and to bless what we are partaking in and to grant us shifa and healing and to op- what? And to, to dress us and bless us for healing and to, to give its lights for the soul and all the ulum and knowledges that are contained within that immense reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah May we start a food program with the banner of Fatima Zahra helping hand here in Bangladesh and to be in khidmah, love for all you there. Wa Alaykum As Salaam Shaykh, we start a food program in Bangladesh with Fatima Zahra. Anywhere that you can get a couple people together and alhamdulillah then email us and we'll give you the, the graphics and put up the banners and alhamdulillah and gather some people together, get some money together, put some food programs out, we'll put the, the photographs out and alhamdulillah it's very beautiful and to give food and, and to be of service it brings the rahmah and brings an immense blessing onto the souls of the people participating in the actual giving, participating in the donating, participating in, in, in putting the programs together and brings an immense rahmah in that area for, as a protection for those people and their families inshaAllah. But help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Taala When doing the practices for the first of Rajab or any important day, do we do it on the Islamic date in our countries or the exact same date as you? Would just like to confirm please. On, on holy nights and the opening of holy months, do we follow what the shaykh is saying or do we follow what the, the country is, is doing? And Mawlana shaykh's teaching for us is, is very sensitive that always in an Islamic country you follow what the country is doing so that you don't run into a conflict and the imams get angry, what tariqah are you following, they're telling you do this, do that. So you always follow the country but for yourself and nobody else has to know it. We all go by what's happening in Medina. So all the shaykhs have been taught that everything and every tajalli starts when Prophet who is alive with his soul in his maqam, fresh, fresh in Medina to Munawwara. So the whole nation starts when Sayyidina Muhammad starts. So Rajab starts when we look at when Medina is starting. As soon as Medina is seeing that moon, the Rajab Tajalli is, is, is coming upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and then to Ulul Am and then out to the rest of the world. So you can wait for when Medina is starting, you start silently for yourself and only for yourself, doesn't have to involve going to the mosque and, and screaming out, this is when I'm starting. So this is something private and personal that we follow Medina and the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad and then we start also when everybody else is starting openly, that's not a problem. It's just when people want the whole world to do what they do is where the conflict arises. So you start any type of holy night, it's for yourself, you see when Medina is receiving that tajalli and asking Allah that to dress me from what you are dressing upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi and join me in that intention for I know nothing and, and Prophet is, is everything for you. 
that dress me from those lights and those blessings inshaAllah. And everything is done tactfully and quietly and not a people that need to get attention for what we do. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Let's say for example, I am interested in marrying a girl, can we get signals and inspirations in the heart that God does not approve of this potential relationship? And someone else also asks, what's the best way to find a suitable spouse during COVID? Yeah, best uh, if somebody wants to marry a girl and, and they want to to make a, or see if there's a sign that if Allah is happy with that decision and how in the times of COVID is the best way to find a spouse, the easiest answer is help me at nurmuhammad.com one and two is that the finding of a, a spouse has many variables. And depending upon the culture that you're in, if you're from subcontinent that is a very strong cultural relationship that the parents are involved and, and the uncles and aunts and the whole clan is involved in those decisions. So there's many variables other than just quickly seeing if, if, the, if you can make a, uh, <laughs> Make a, what we call the istikh, not istikhar, making istikhara, istikhara, istikhara. And just making istikhara and say, okay, this is going to be good or, or not good for me. You have to first use the level of the mind that uh, is this compatible at our, at our work level, mind level, intellectual level, family level. Is there a sense of compatibility? So, you use all of the physical attributes in which Allah gave. When those are there then you pray that Allah grant you a sign that this is something good for you and that Allah to dress it and bless it. At that time you make istikhara but you don't make the istikhara without having known any variables because then you're asking from a realm of, of like unseen to give you signs and, and you can be more practical than that. We don't need to, to go into the unseen signs where your mind could have deciphered that. So you have to use all of the variables and checklists and is this the rizq that is sufficient, is, is this compatibility, do we, do we have a sense of uh, compatibility with our characters, are our families compatible, are we from uh, the same region, same understanding. So you use all of those. And at the end when everything looks like it's going to be good, like this is the choice that you want to make, at that time you make your istikhara that Allah to dress it, to bless it. And if there's anything significantly wrong Allah to send a sign for its danger or its difficulty inshaAllah. Um, uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Alaikum how should I get a solution instantly for any difficult situation when we are not near to our shaykh? When I try to connect spiritually, I do not get answers. How should we, let's go again on the question, how do I get an instant reply from my shaykh on a certain situation when I'm not near my shaykh? Was that correct? Yes. Yes. Yes, well the, the answer for that is they see there should be no instant reply. We're, this is not drive through spirituality and tariqa is teaching you to go much slower. This is like a chess game and a chess game means that every, every move you do has to have a strategy and understanding and the shaykh is not here to play your game for you but here to assist you on how to play correctly. So there's a big difference, people think they're going to email, give me this, where's this, how do I do this, tell the job for me, what school I should go to. No, the shaykh is not here to take your path, he's not here to cheat for you, nothing. A real shaykh and, and, and one whom been properly trained is here to teach you how to take your path by his teachings, by the zikrs, by the awrads. And then occasional communications and teaching you most important is to start to meditate and contemplate, open the light within your heart and then you play your life like a chess game that if I go here 
what are the three different things that will be happening to me? So you don't take your hand off of the peace while you're thinking that, should I make this move in life? And what will happen to me this way? What will happen to me that way? And that's exactly how the shaykhs govern themselves. They don't sit there for instant communications and answers back. Their shaykhs have taught them same, they contemplate every move because Allah may be testing you if you're going to move into something that's not correct for you. So then they have to with their heart sort of analyze every variable that if I step this forward step, what happens? What are the dangers of happening and then what happened behind me as I stepped forward? And that's what they want, they want sort of somebody to be developed who's very strategic and understanding. And the reason for the tafakkur is that more and more fires and lights of the shaykh to enter into the heart to support. You know you feel the support of these awliya Allah that are supporting you to incline towards the right choice, the good choice, the clean choice. So it's not about the shaykh taking the path for you and I emailed you three times and I didn't get a single answer from you, then you become angry and, and that as a matter of fact will slow them down more just to see how angry you get. They don't react to anger at all and it's very dangerous for you to become angry around them because as they don't say anything Allah will punish you and that's the danger. So the, the whole character is something of a training. So when you don't get a response back, be patient, they want to check your heart. Be patient and you can reply again, oh I asked this and if, if any answer would come I'd be grateful and maybe reword it a different way, try you know be, be, be clever. And rewording it a different way, maybe the way you worded the question they're not going to give a response to it. But everything is a means in which Allah to dress us and to bless us and that's why this whole way opens for us. Allah wants to show us what are we lacking in our character, how we should fix it and how we should deal with it. How can someone be raised up if they're going to have bad character with a shaykh? Can you imagine they're going to do that tomorrow to Prophet They're going to be in a meditation and get angry with what Prophet is telling them or, or, or not telling them or you, it's just something that can't happen. So those very low level characteristics have to be completely taken away in which it's just taslim, taslim and they submit, they submit and they go through many different hardships and, and challenges in life and that's what makes them to be stronger and Allah to address them with more and more Divinely love inshaAllah. Yes Sayyidi as Salaamu As Salaamu Alaykum Walaykum As Salaamu Alaykum Wa should we Should suffer, we suffer from, from problems problem by, keeping by keeping patient, patient and silent? Silent, 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 silent? Should we suffer from problems by, by keeping patience and silence? Well the, the reverse is that is that if you were not patient and you were not silent are you saying the problem would go away? So that depends on, on, I don't, that doesn't usually work. So our life is, a, they describe for us destiny is that you born and your death has nothing to do with you. When your parents brought you into this world and when you're going to die has nothing to do with you. Your destiny is that you're on this airplane flying from Los Angeles to New York. And your life is about how good a passenger are you going to be on this plane because you have limited free will. If you're in seat 30 but you won't seat 14, you can't yell and scream about it because they just come and tell you that, you know, you're stuck here, don't, don't bother us. If you yell and aggravate they may actually tie you up and, and hold you down onto the chair because you're becoming a dis disruptive passenger on the flight. So tariqah comes to teach that just have good patience, have good character. Wherever Allah has put us then we have good character and humble and there's a way in which to ask people, a way in which to, to sort of proceed in our lives. So then Allah will be happy with you and all of a sudden the person comes and says, you know we have an opening up in front, why don't you come up in front? Because if Allah's happy with you everything opens. If Allah's not happy, no matter how much you bother that person, I want to move forward, 
if Allah didn't write it, that person can't enact it. It's not in their program to give you that. So everything coming to us in the ocean of tawheed, La ilaha illallah, when we say that we have to understand that nothing comes to us except by Allah So why bother somebody to get what you need to get when you can get it only from Allah? So then it teaches us to be taslim and du'a, Ya Rabbi provide me an opening, nobody can grant me an opening, nobody can send me anything. If you're not happy grant me your happiness, illahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob, anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob, I beg your forgiveness and seek your satisfaction. So all day long, hundred times a day, illahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob, illahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. That I beg your forgiveness Ya Rabbi and seek your satisfaction. Beg your forgiveness for I might be doing something that angering you and, and nothing is opening for me. And I seek your satisfaction that whatever you gave to me maybe I wasn't thankful enough for it and that I've offended you Ya Rabbi, forgive me. So alhamdulillah I think through patience and, 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 and good character things can be resolved. This doesn't mean to be abused by people. Once somebody is harming somebody or abusing physically somebody, no you, you have to go run to the authorities and, and, and you know seek uh, protection. That's, this is not about people uh, allowing the abuse of other people. This is about just being patient in life and in life's uh, daily interactions inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum, As -salamu alaykum Shaykh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, can, uh, Sayyidi, can jinns, jinns and humans, and humans interact, 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 interact even to the even point of producing point of mixed jinn-human jinn kids? Can, can jinns and humans interact and even to the point of making jinn and human kids? And can a jinn can fall jinn in love with a human, human and, prevent and prevent them from marriage, from marriage or a good marriage? Sure, right. I think the person asking that already knows that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No definitely that, that, that world is, is a mix uh, in everything and the whole concept of disease is from that realm. So that's a or modern day physicians don't understand that realm anymore. Before the tip and nubuwa and prophetic medicine it incorporated the spiritual and the physical. So they understood that there's energies that affect people and what happens when these energies draw near to us, what happens with the energy within our body, the liquids within our bodies, the, the, the food within our stomach because of energy beings attaching themselves near us in our proximity of us. So all of this was incorporated of a holistic uh, approach towards the mind of people, through the body of people and through the soul of people. All of that left and it became just the body of people. On what the… What, what's going to happen with you know our physical body, take some medicine and fix your body. There's no longer focus on the, the mental effect, the, the psychosis of, of the person and affecting their body nor, nor any effect on their soul. What are the spiritual ramifications of what's happening upon this person? So that was a, a strong belief in the unseen world and the understanding of the jinn and their mixing within our world and, and what they're trying to, to do within our world. So we already have talks on that that they want very much to integrate a hundred percent with humanity, with their technologies, with all that they're doing, with these sicknesses that are coming upon the earth is to fully integrate and make the humans to be avatars of their dimension. And Mawlana Shaykh described 90% of humanity has already given themselves to these creatures and they're no longer human, their food is not human, their desires are not human. Their characteristics are no longer of humanity. Humanity and human characteristics are of a Divine nature of compassion and mercy and, and forgiveness and all the beatific things that we can think of that things are like bayans ago or, or, or they think that those were things of the past but those were our humanity. When our humanity leaves nobody can understand humanity anymore. And the characteristics that people are now exhibiting are not from humanity, those are from the realm that is not supposed to be on this, on this realm. So the more that they integrate and want to integrate 
the more the food desire becomes bad. Who would eat cockroaches and roaches and, and, and scorpions and all of the lowest level of, 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 of sustenance for the lowest level of creatures because that's their sustenance. And the sustenance and they feed upon mankind and they feed upon every forbidden and this is their desires. When they overtake the humanity of somebody then that person changes, their characteristics change, their, 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 their characteristics, their anger, their whole persona changes and that's what they're trying to do. And the weakening through sicknesses in the last days is more that they want to enter into these humanity and overtake them. But Allah gave everyone a very resilient soul and the soul is struggling and fighting to push them out. And that's the problem that people are having that when the soul is, is by its nature and heavenly nature trying to push the inhabitant out then he knows that the only way to come in is then to weaken that body and to make it sick. By making it sick then they come fully into the body and they imprison the soul and overtake the body and all its functionings. So definitely they, they, they're coming in and they do overtake. And also the sunnah and sharia of sleeping was be based on that realm, don't sleep with no clothes on. And that before you have relationships you have to have your wudu, you have to make your, your zikr, you have to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. All of that was so that their realm doesn't intermix with the events that are happening and then many different uh, deformalities and, and different things begin to happen. So all the, what Prophet gave to us was a protection. We sleep, we sleep covered and we sleep covered because sleep is a, is a battlefield in which you're entering into a state of death and moving towards Allah At the same time you don't want to leave your physical body to be overtaken and possessed. So then they wear their taweez, they're in their sunnah, they made wudu before they sleep, they never sleep without wudu. And all of that was so that for those realities and, and whatever Prophet wanted to teach for us on how to protect ourselves. But when all of that is gone then it all seems like something ajeeb in the last days. But all of it was given as an inheritance for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Um, as salaamu alaykum dear Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa can, long, huh? can you please shed light on techniques to bring my mother to Islam? I also ask for your dua, please Ya Sayyidi, may Allah bless you. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If your, if your mother is, is not from uh, Islamic background then our, our videos are the easiest because the videos are inviting and, and the videos on meditations and, and the, the zikrs, the chanting. Many family members of, of uh, non-Muslim background, the tariqah is, is most attractive to them. That the tariqah is not uh, very attractive for Muslim people. The majority of people who come to tariqah are from a non-Muslim background because Allah left their hearts to be open, they're not sort of preconditioned on, on certain things. And as a result they love the chanting, their, their hearts emanate and resonate with the sounds of the vibrations and the style of teaching that we teach. We try to teach on the energy teachings, the, the water, the zikr, the salah, all of that at a level in which is uh, uh, the common denominator of, of energy where people can relate and say, okay I understand the energy and I understand I need to build my energy and I understand how I'm losing my energy. So alhamdulillah the tariqah is, is uh, resonates with uh, people from different backgrounds. And alhamdulillah Allah guiding many, many people from, from different backgrounds towards the tariqah in the last days, especially in the last days. And we pray that Allah open and dress the, the Muslim nation and the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad back back to the reality and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then to the turuqs and the tariqahs so that they can build this way of muhabbat and exemplary faith, the exemplary character, the good character that's necessary 
for Allah to dress them and bless them inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.